Hi, I'm SCB and you're joining me for the countdown of my top 10 favourite pieces of art from the 1990s. Many of the featured artists are commonly known as part of the Young British Artists Group, made famous for employing shock tactics, use of throwaway materials, wild living and an attitude both oppositional and entrepreneurial. They achieved considerable major media coverage and dominated British art during the 1990s. Many were involved in the notorious London shows Freeze, Brilliant and Sensation. After art collector Charles Saatchi, I'm probably the biggest fan of this group and their focus on the best of British, their humour, their arrogance and their love-hate relationship with the media has been a massive influence on my work. So sit back and relax as we take a journey through the decade of shock, horror and brilliant art. Starting off the countdown, we have Gillian Waring's Signs That Say What You Want Them To Say and Not Signs That Say What Someone Else Wants You To Say, made in 1992-93. to this series was produced by approaching people on London streets, asking them to write something on a card and then photographing them as they displayed it. Waring has described her work method as editing life by using photography and video to record the confessions of ordinary people. Her work explores disparities between public and private life, between individual and collective experience. I first came across these photographs while I was studying art at GCSE level in 2008. In response to this piece, I painted a busy London tube carriage where each figure had caution tape wrapped around them that read the prejudices they felt against them. In at number 9 we have Mark Quinn's Self, a frozen sculpture of the artist's head made from 4.5 litres of his own blood taken from his body over a period of 5 months. Described by Quinn as a frozen moment on life support, the work is carefully maintained in a refrigeration unit reminding the viewer of the fragility of existence. The artist makes a new version of Self every 5 years, each of which documents Quinn's own physical transformation and deterioration. I once had the idea of producing a frozen cast of my own head using the dirty shower water from when I wash off fake tan, however I didn't have enough room in my freezer to store it. In at number 8 we have a piece of artwork I saw very recently at Creed's current exhibition at the Hayward Gallery. In work number 79, made in 1993, a piece of blue tack is rolled into a ball and depressed against the wall. The slightness of the gesture and its humorous inadequacy as a constructed object calls into question the nature of sculpture. Creed's work plays on definitions of art using techniques reminiscent of those employed by Marcel Duchamp in his presentation of objects and ideas. I definitely recommend this show, it's one of the funnest art exhibitions I've ever been to. Up next, we have Madame Two Swords Meets the Tate in the form of Pop, made by Gavin Turk in 1993. Pop is a waxwork figure of the artist as Sid Vicious, in the pose of Andy Warhol's Elvis Presley, which imagined the quiff star as a gunslinging cowboy, the original king of pop as celebrated by the original king of pop art. Pop is a wry take on the commodification of culture, in which rebels and heroes, artists, artworks and icons are reduced to products whose value is determined by the arbitrary randomness of the market. I love the jumble of references to pop culture Turk makes in this piece. It's definitely one that has influenced my own work greatly. In at number 6 we have the Turner Prize winning house 
made by Rachel Whiteread in 1993. Probably her best known work is the concrete cast of the inside of an entire Victorian terraced house, exhibited at the location of the original house, which had been knocked down previously by the council, 193 Grove Road in East London. Unfortunately, the piece was demolished by the council again on the 11th of January in 1994. A work by one of my favourite artists and another Turner Prize winner comes in the form of Chris Ophelia's Aphrodisia, made in 1996 and in at number 5 on our countdown. In this painting, Ophelia is trying to seek out ways of defining his own identity as a young black artist from Manchester. Ophelia appears to define notions of Afro-beauty, but also stands back from them, playing with them and caricaturing them to a degree. I first saw this painting in Ophelia's major retrospective, at the Tate Britain in 2010. I still maintain that this is the best painting show I've ever seen. An artist who has coined the term Ladette stomps in at number four. You're looking at Au Naturel by Sarah Lucas, made in 1994. Lucas makes sculptures from an unexpected range of everyday materials, such as worn furniture, clothing, fruit, vegetables, newspapers, cigarettes, cars, resin plaster, neon lamps and light fittings. The grungy abject appearance of many of her works belies the serious and complex subject matter they address. She makes constant reference to the human body, questioning gender definitions and challenging macho culture. Last year I saw Lucas's retrospective at the Whitechapel Gallery. All I can say is that I'm glad I didn't take my mum to this one. Friend to Lucas and one of art's major money makers is Damien Hurst, who takes the bronze in our countdown with The Physical Impossibility of Death in the Mind of Someone Living, made in 1991. This work consists of a 13-foot tiger shark, preserved in a tank of formaldehyde, weighing a total of 23 tonnes. Hurst's intention was to force the viewer out of their element by introducing into a gallery setting a shark that was, as he put it, real enough to frighten you. He also states, you try and avoid death, but it's such a big thing that you can't. That's a frightening thing, isn't it? This work explores our greatest fears and the difficulty involved in adequately trying to express them. This is definitely one of the most jaw-dropping pieces of artwork I've ever seen in a gallery space. And I don't criticise Hurst for all the help he had in making it. Because, to be fair, you'd need some help reeling that in on the fishing line, wouldn't you? Now just missing the top spot is the piece of artwork that Gavin Turk failed his masters for at the Royal College but has gone on to be his most famous piece, Cave, made in 1991. Turk presented this historical blue plaque as a commemoration of a life, marking the presence of the artist with the most powerful and evocative of all the tools that might be at his disposal, his absence. Turk took a massive risk presenting this piece, which although it cost him his educational status, led him to great success in the art world. I think I'd be far too much of a wuss to take the risk myself.
And finally, my number one favourite piece of artwork made in the 1990s, the piece that created a media storm and public outcry, Tracy Emin's My Bed, first presented in 1998. The artwork was met with repulse from many viewers over the fact that the bed sheets were stained with bodily secretions and the floor had items from the artist's room such as condoms, a pair of knickers with menstrual period stains and more everyday objects, including a pair of slippers. The bed was presented in the state that Emin claimed it had been in when she said she had not got up from it for several days due to suicidal depression brought on by relationship difficulties. Sadly, Emin's bed missed out on the Turner Prize in 1999, which I think is a great shame, and perhaps a huge criticism of the piece shows that really, the art world has learnt nothing since Marcel Duchamp presented his urinal. This is a particular favourite of mine because of its unedited honesty and the vulnerability of Emin in presenting something so personal. I feel like in presenting it, she asks the viewers for trust in receiving it, and at the same time shows that we can trust her and believe her. Thanks for tuning in to my top 10 artworks made in the 1990s. I hope you've enjoyed the countdown and are inspired to look further into the work of the young British artists of the 90s. And if your response is, well I could have done that, go and make some art yourself.